Sometimes things don't go the way they're planned, and that's just the case of this video. However, it's not the project we're working on, it's the actual video. This video was intended to be a part of a series that was built for this YouTube channel called Build It. However, juggling a full-time job and a car, I'm trying to restore and a bunch of other projects. I just did not find the time to make it work successfully. Even though it's mentioned multiple times during the video, there won't be an episode 2 of Build It. However, if that is something that you are after, I can probably look towards that in the future. But anyway, enough of that, and let's get started with the, what was supposed to be the pilot episode of Build It. Welcome to a new series I'm making called Build It. Build It is a series where we'll be making things from scratch in every episode. This episode, we're going to be making a desk for my friend Lindsay. Lindsay lives in Melbourne and he'll be using this computer desk to do his uni work. We got plenty of materials we'll be using for this build, lots of wood, lots of timber panels, but you'll all see that in just a minute. We're going to have a lot of fun on this build, so sit back, relax, and let's roll that intro. I think our first step should be putting together the frame. Now the frame is mostly going to be put together by this 42 by 42 mil square pipe. These pieces, however, are 1.2 metres long, they're just a little bit too long for us, we're going to chop them down to 800 mil. We are going to start off this build with the extremely exciting task of heading over to the miners to chop up some of this pine. As I said before, we'll be chopping these 42 by 42 mil square pine posts to 800 mil long, as well as chopping down some 42 by 19 mil strips of pine down to their size as well. The next step is to drill some pocket holes in their spaces. We did attempt to use dowels on everything, but due to the doweling jig being dodgy and me probably not knowing how to use it the right way, we decided to go with pocket holes and glue instead. We continued on by gluing and screwing the spaces into place. Now we have assembled the front side of the cabinet, however it won't be holding much just like that so now I can use a jigsaw and a straight edge to cut down some of this laminated pine panel down to size. And I'll be attaching this using pocket holes, they just so quick and easy plus if you use plenty of strong glue you'll be right with it. Here we are laying down some spaces to lift the laminated panel up so we can attach it. But this is one of the biggest mistakes in the whole project. If we just hit the pause button right here. Now we can see that lip on the edge. Well at the time we thought it looked okay but it quickly turned back to bite us in the ass. As the draw runners wouldn't clear this lip I had to chisel it all out which you will see later on. Okay, play the video again. With the mistake completely unknown to us at the time, we continued to put everything together and ended up with a completed cabinet. High five, Lindsay. Alright, so this is what we've done right now. We've installed one side which is going to have a cabinet and the other side which will hold his computer. Now these spaces right here, they're not going to be there forever, they're just there to hold it while the glue dries. Next up, time to work on the drawers for this one here. Now putting drawers together is a piece of piss, I mean pretty simple. So instead of drawing out the process, see what I did there, we decided to throw together a montage of drawer building.
Okay, so the drawers are finished and they're, they're pretty well. They're, they do stick just a little bit, which probably could just be sorted out by a little more sanding and planing, but I've been doing that for hours. Uh, the knobs won't all be uh, multicolored. They will just be this silver color in here. However, my friend did take them back to Melbourne with him, so I just used two that I had lying around here. So the drawers are basically done. There's two coats of varnish on this. I'm not sure whether you will have seen that yet or not. So these drawers are all done and now we can work on the desktop. So this is our bench top we're using for the desk. It is a 2.2 meter acacia panel. However, just like my bench top, we're gonna chop it down to 1.8 meters and use the excess for the part where his computer will sit. So let's bust out the circular saw and do that right now. We got the snazzy tape measure out to measure out 1.8 metres long, which is about 6 foot if you use those dumb imperial measurements. Then we can kindly borrow Dad's 20 year old circular saw to cut off the excess. We are left with about 400mm left over and we need to chop about 30mm off the end because it's where the computer will sit. Now it's time for a quick test fit and you can see it was absolutely spectacular and you can also see the computer holder I made on the other side which was almost made the exact same way as the drawer side. Now let's get into the exciting world of sanding. I'm going to start off with some 80 grit then smooth out any imperfections or bumps then I'm going to move up to some 120 grit to prep for varnish. Now you could stop there but I'm going to do a sand with 240 grit to get everything nice and smooth. Then I'm going to be using some 360 grit for sanding in between the coats and a good tip is before you put your final coat of varnish on, rub some steel fine wool over the top, it will make it look amazing. So just as I said I'm going to start with some 80 grit and work my way up through the grits. And you'll want to make sure that you sand both sides because you'll need to varnish both sides too. sends panel in preparation for our finishing coats. Sanding helps our finishers to stick to our boards. I started off with an 80 grit to smooth out everything between the boards. Then I went up to a 120 grit just to smooth everything out. Now you can stop there but I went up to a 240 just to really get a nice smooth finish. And this is going to leave us in perfect preparation for our finished coat. Now your finished coat before you start you may want to really wipe it down with either a rag or a tap cloth just to remove any of this old sanding dust or sawdust or anything. Then you want to sort out what finish you want to use. There is a huge range of finishes that you can use. You can go oils, varnishes, stains, stain and varnishes, and even a whole lot more. You can go a stain and varnish which will completely change the look of your wood while also providing protection. Or you can use just a normal stain if you don't want to have a varnish on the top. You can also stain your wood then varnish it later in a second step if you really want to. Or you can just go with a normal varnish like this. Now both your stain and varnishes will come in all different types of ones that you can buy such as oil based, water based, gloss, satin, matte, anything under the sun that you can think of. Now it's important to remember that oil based will last a little bit longer and also is a fair bit stronger than your water based. However your water based is great at UV protection, dries really fast and is better for the environment anyway. Now for gloss and satin finishes you want to use a foam roller. This just helps smooth out anything that gives you a perfect finish. And for the edges, just pick yourself up a good quality brush. Now, since we are using water based, we will only have to wash it up in water, which is just great. Saves a lot of time, whereas oil based, you will have to use turfs. Alright, with that out the road, let's get into varnishing. Here we go, time for the best part of any woodworking job, which is applying the finish. I went for a flooring varnish because it would be extra strong, and check out that colour. With the top done we can start to sand the cabinets and since I sanded the top all by myself I think I'm going to need to magic and a helper. 
perfect. I think you're going to have to remember this trick more often because it's actually very good to have a second pair of hands. And look, he bought his own sand, he was already better than a bloody apprentice. Well, it would have been nice if second James had helped me with the varnish, but he ran out here pretty fast after sanding, so it's just me. And once again, even though it's only boring old pine, the colour that it brings out is just amazing. Now, while I did start off with a brush, I did eventually move on to a foam roller. So here's the main components of the desk. We have our drawers over here and our computer stand over here. Timber my bench is out of frame over there, but we are forgetting one part because I forgot about it. And that's this back support here. We've got some pocket holes at each side, which we're gonna screw on in between the two carcasses here, just to give it a little bit more strength. So we're gonna do that because it's time for final assembly. Now, I did mount brackets under the tabletop to attach it, but I lost the footage. Anyway, with that back on, the tabletop is now done. from scratch out of some pine and timber panels and we even made custom drawers for it. And I think it was totally a success because this is going to suit Lindsay's needs perfectly for his uni work and any other work he decides to do while in Melbourne. Is there anything I'd improve on? Absolutely, I'd redo the drawers so it wouldn't have that little lip on the inside because I did have to chisel all that away to make the drawer slides sit flush. I'd also adjust the legs a little bit more. I'd have adjustable feet at the bottom like I did on my metal desk which I made a few months back. But that's something that he can add later in the future. Also, this is going to be sitting on carpet, so we're going to take that little rock out of it. Thank you so much for watching this first episode of Build It. This episode was so much fun to make, especially with Lindsay here by my side for half of it. If you want to keep up to date with everything I'm building, make sure you check out my Instagram linked down below and also in that bottom corner down there. There's going to be a card up in that top corner here with a playlist of all the other Build It episodes when they come out. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.
Great tag here. Amazing. Never seen anything like it. So thank you for watching what was supposed to be the pilot episode of Build It. There was supposed to be another episode next week, but however, I never got around to filming it, just with other time management stuff. If there won't be an episode two, however, if you guys do want to see that, I can maybe look at something towards in the future. But we'll see how we go anyway. We'll see what you guys think of this. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.